another episode here today with me, Astrid, your APD, and I am having a very interesting conversation on all about protein. I know it is very repetitive, but it's amazing to talk about protein all the time. I've got Alan Aragon with me today, and we're talking all things protein. And the thing is that we're going to cover quite a few things that he wrote in his book that he just recently launched, and we're going to see what some of the things that we usually ask all time, we can get it answered by the one and only Alan. It really comes down to what works for you and how better you can adhere to it. Hello. How you doing Astrid? I'm very, very happy to see you. I'm super happy to see you, and I should have probably said a, a small, short prayer that our connection would be good. Oh my God, I was thinking the same. <laughs> like, hopefully this time he doesn't transform into different versions of himself. Yeah, 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 I, I'm done evolving. I think this is the final, this is the final form right here, so. Excited that you just launched your book on protein. So I was wondering why the protein why protein are not about fiber or carbohydrates or fats? Why protein? Well, <laughs> that's probably going to be the hardest question that, that you asked me, but without giving it too much thought, I would have to say that bros like their protein. And mm -hmm. I have come to terms, I've come to grips with the fact that I'm 110% bro. So, I'm just interested in what my friend Ryan Zalanka calls the Optimus Prime of the, mac of the macronutrients. Um, life pretty much begins and ends with protein, and uh, especially with this niche that I'm in being about improving body composition, health, and athletic performance. Uh, protein uh, it, it is a very strong kind of multitasking ingredient to that mix. So I, I, I love carbs, I love fats. I'm, I, don't, I wouldn't say I am super interested in protein and not very interested in carbs and fats. I am super interested in carbs and fats. I think that most of the mythology in the nutrition world centers around carbohydrates. So I, I would love to um, cover that at some point. And, and I, I'm, I'm working on stuff. So, so yeah, that, that's pretty much my answer for that first question, okay. which I, I knew was going to be kind of a tough one. I know it is. It is always hard to say to actually explain why you do certain things or why mm -hmm. you choose to do one topic or the other. You've been doing your research review f for a long, long time, and yeah. most of the topic you always touch <sighs> is protein. And mm -hmm. I guess this is a topic that we get very is very popular as well. It's get, it gets so many questions and so much attention that it's always like a recurring topic that is brought up in Q and A, some conversations. And it's, it's good that like you just wanted to say, you know what, let's just stop asking questions. Here are all, all the answers you'll be asking for. Yeah, I get asked protein questions a lot. Me, I, I wanna thank you for inviting me on and I wanna thank everybody out there. YouTubers, YouTubers, what, hold back on the dislikes, you know, make sure you like and subscribe and, and you know, be, <laughs> put on your put on your uh, uh, best manners in the comments, right? So, Alan, I have a very very pressing question, and I think you get this question a lot as well. Okay, how is the shading is protein really? Like, once you have reached a certain level of protein intake, more wouldn't do much, wouldn't it? Or like, can you say more is better? You know that that's a good question because like a lot of these good questions, there's room for speculation. You know, it's not something that's been definitively answered and, and beaten to the ground. And we, that's something that we can say with confidence, you need X amount of protein to maximize satiety. Um, it's, it's pretty well established that protein is more satiating than the other macronutrients when you compare them individually. So uh, the, the least satiating in the short term would be fat and then a step up from that would be carbohydrate and then protein tends to, to beat them out in uh, single meal acute satiety studies and so it is the most satiating macronutrient as, as far as we can tell 
but there also seems to be a limit uh, that it, it's effective for that purpose in terms of daily dosing. And there are some interesting research done where a, a 1.8 grams per kilogram of, of body weight, uh, a protein dose, daily protein dose, 1.8 grams per kilo, uh, was, was no more or, or was no less satiating than approximately a kilogram more, um, a gram more per kilogram of body weight, more than that. So it was pretty, pretty close-ish to uh, three grams per kilo that was tested. And there was, however, with that higher dose, there, it did have a slight advantage in terms of um, uh, reducing cravings. So it didn't necessarily tick off all the boxes in terms of appetite regulation on those sub subjective scales, but it did, it did offer a little bit of an edge in terms of reducing cravings. And so when we're looking at protein for satiety and we're pushing the limits at like, you know, two to three grams per kilogram of body weight, we're usually talking about populations that are trying to get that final fraction of a percent of effectiveness. And so even if there is a small benefit of, let's say, three grams per kilogram over 1.8 grams per kilogram, in certain populations like competitive uh, physique populations, or even people who are just recreationally trying to hold it together as they do their, you know, their, their free summer shred, <laughs> their annual shred, it can matter. It, it can make a difference. So I would say as far as we know right now, it is looking like you can get some satiety, some satiety benefits at potentially a ceiling of somewhere in the three grams per kilogram of body weight area. And I'm kind of putting circumstantial bits and pieces together there because I'm also considering observational literature, looking at uh, elite level natural bodybuilding competitors who the top five placers consume protein between three and 3.3 grams per kilogram of, of body weight. Uh, whereas the folks who placed out of the top five consumed a little bit less than that. So just looking at the, these bits and pieces of evidence that are admittedly incomplete, we can tentatively conclude that towards the three grams uh, per uh, kilogram of body weight would be the, potentially the, the sweet spot for pushing satiety limits with protein. And then if, if I may ramble a little bit more, there is the potential for certain forms of protein, physical forms of protein, to be more satiating than, than others. So, so the more solid you get with a protein source, the closer you get with something that's solid that you have to chew and that you have to work to, to get down into your system, as opposed to a protein source that you can just drink down really fast. Uh, that is going yeah, to I was offer... To ask you. Yes, that, that's going to offer that more satiating I, capacity. Yeah, I was going to say that just because... Like sometimes, like if I only drink a whey protein shake, mm -hmm. I man, I'm hungry 20 minutes later again. It's yeah. like I am not really satiated at all. I mm -hmm. want like and that. That comes with another question. That is, is it more important to balance protein and like where does it fiber come into place when it comes to satiety? Mm -hmm. If we think that protein has a very potent satiating effect, mm -hmm. where what about fiber? Where where does that fit? into this equation of, of satiety. The research that we have missing on fiber is, is like direct comparisons with how satiating is fiber in isolation versus protein in isolation. But I guess researchers aren't creative enough to, to come up with those kinds of comparisons. But fiber as just a, as a general, general category, and there, there's many different types of fibers but fiber itself generally is a satiating factor. So uh, at, when you look at all of the dietary factors that could possibly contribute to satiety, protein and fiber are right there at, at the top. And that's because there's, there's so many different types of carbohydrate that can have a mix of different uh, elements, including fiber in there, that um, you can't necessarily lump carbohydrate as this... Uh, single monolithic uh, 
homogeneous unit when you, when you talk about carbohydrate and satiety. You have to look at, well, well, let's look at the different carbohydrate foods, the different carb sources. Um, how do we possibly disentangle fiber's effect on satiety from just the, the whole unit of the food matrix itself if we're talking about carbohydrate foods? Those are questions that are, are not necessarily answered very thoroughly. But um, fiber, especially fibers that are gel-forming, or that become viscous and tend to uh, slow the digestion process, those are the, the fibers that contribute most to satiating effects. And one of, the, right. one of the, the, the prime examples of that would be the beta-glucans in oats. So oat fiber would be one of, uh, one of the MVPs as far as uh, satiating effects go when we're talking about fiber. And so it's interesting. It's not necessarily a matter of soluble versus insoluble. It's more potentially more a matter of, of whether it's a uh, gel-forming fiber or not. And so, so yeah, the gel-forming fibers are the stars, but fiber in general is a satiating factor. Um, I couldn't imagine taking, let's say, uh, 100, 100 calories of protein and trying to pile up 100 metabolizable calories of fiber and comparing those. The, the big pile of fiber might get you super angry and ill but it might satiate you as much or, or more than the protein because you're doubling and tripling, quadrupling up on the volume of food that you would have to eat in order to match the metabolizable energy between those, those two foods. So, so yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't have a strong answer for what's more satiating calorie for calorie between fiber and protein. Fiber might be it, but it, it would be an unrealistic amount that you would eat and it would be more like a kind of a prison sentence than a, <laughs> than an eating experience so but but yeah it, i guess yeah what i would say is i guess it would be a matter of looking at the, the the two factors on like the protein and the fiber as both to be important and like you shouldn't be displacing or overrating mm -hmm. one over the other like they both should be part of your diet anyway yeah. it's just a matter of trying to balance that out and kind of well looking where you might be a not getting the right amount in the first place. So like if you're under eating uh, an actual amount of protein or you're under eating adequate amount of fiber, mm -hmm. let's, sure, let's just start by upping up to like an adequate amount and see what happens. But I guess um, it's like they allied, not like the enemy. So we would just try to put them together. Um, but I would say like my question was coming from the point of like maybe – is it someone that is so focused on, well, because protein is so satiating that they are kind of overeating a lot of protein and displacing other macronutrients uh, or displacing an adequate amount of vegetables and protein um, and like fiber intake coming mm -hmm. from other sources that uh, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Are they, are they just being overrating too much the protein intake for the sachets? A satiating effect mm -hmm. and perhaps they are forgetting about other macronutrients that could play a role like just upping their fiber intake yeah i think there are comparisons that should be made that haven't been made in the literature so and that that certain comparisons would put uh things like apples <laughs> at, at maybe a higher satiating point than um than certain protein foods so um there, there is some interesting literature showing the satiating capacity of preloading with with whole app with whole apples, not not whole entire apples, but um, um, fresh apples, fresh apple matter <laughs> uh, before a meal, and it cutting down um, subsequent eating by a significant amount of energy. I think in the neighborhood of like seventy five hundred calories or something like that. But but yeah, with with apples, you're essentially looking at water, carbohydrate. And, and fiber in there as well. So I think that water and fiber within the matrix of whole foods is a, is a highly underrated uh, satiety combination because you've, you've got um, the elements of high micronutrient density with, uh, with low energy density, and you've got satiating capacity in there as well because you've got a, a lot of uh, physical space that can be displaced within the stomach, within the, within the GI tract without having to deal with actual metabolizable energy that, that could otherwise be filling that, that stomach space. So food volume as a satiating factor um, is an important thing to consider. And 
high water, high fiber foods do a great job at fulfilling that task. Thank you so much for being watching. I appreciate you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any comments, please comment below. And I'll be sure I'll answer to this as soon as I can.